गुड इवनिंग गुरु जी द लास्ट फ्यू एपिसोड्स हैव बीन क्वाइट आई डोंट नो हाउ टू से इट बट लॉर्ड ऑफ चर्न बट एवरी टाइम सो आई वॉज रिफ्लेक्टिंग अपॉन एवरी थिंग दैट हैपन्स एंड इट्स सीम्स टू बी दैट द सेम प्रोसेस विद माई स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ एज वेल एक्जैक्टली वॉट हैपन्स इन द एपिसोड लाइक ट्रिगर कम्स दर इज एन इवेंट इट क्वेश्चन समथिंग वेरी फंडामेंटल एंड दैट फंडामेंटल रिजॉल्व और डिजॉल्व इन टू नथिंग सो इट्स every episode has been like that a question about something and then you take me through uh but today i want to begin here because um from the last one and i'd recommend everybody to go and watch that one it is about the here and now the freshness of here and now so after that episode and after that conversation with you something fundamentally changed okay and uh i was uh, doing this like work for 10 years right as a life coach and i felt that is what the purpose was and everything was this imperfection and life was really good i was getting paid i was making the impact whatever i wanted out of it but um i somehow dropped that whole thing about legacy and leaving the greatness and all those concepts basically dropped last time mm-hmm. and i felt they'll take time honestly mm-hmm. in my my mind kept going back but um, no it just fell away and uh, i told my mom that uh, and i didn't work i haven't done a session since last week and just just been sitting um the things and suddenly a whole new dimension to my uh contribution to the world happened someone sent me money and i ended up doing food donation and i thought it's like a one time event but no life wants me to do more like someone saw it on instagram and replied saying can i send money for next month will you do it for me also and then someone sent for august and then i have someone like people are just sending me money and i don't know how to take that money because so far i just do it did it personally and i found it so fulfilling and i found it so so natural to what i am and i felt so amazing doing it that i said yes i will continue doing this mm-hmm. and it didn't stop there uh, more and more such things have showed up uh, so i wonder what happens <laughs> when you just like and my website everything is the same um, i haven't changed anywhere but one status update uh, and yeah boom like entire trajectory of my life is looking different suddenly and i have a calling to teach uh, devi mahatmyam also and that calling has become so strong like one week i haven't been able to sleep i already have the course ready almost and i wonder what this is but there is no need in me to process so very good <laughs> i don't have the need to sit with it and analyze whether this will be successful or yeah like none of that and my parents are supporting uh, my father is coming and he's like i'll be part of it and this whole time they never understood what i'm doing mm. like they could never explain back home what do i do for a living how could i get paid so much for talking to people about their life and their problems and traumas they just couldn't wrap their head around because it's so absent in the culture where i come mental health doesn't exist yes either there is god problems or there are financial problems or there are health problems but there's that's the spectrum mental health problems are just like almost absent 
or else you're crazy, something like that. So they could never explain what I'm doing. And this, they just like so charged and everybody in the world wants to help me. And they were the last people I expected help from. Mm. And they're like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. What do you want to do? You want to build a temple? We'll get funds. You want to teach people? Mm -hmm. We'll get people. And I'm like, what? <laughs> So, yeah, since our last conversation, uh, the entire trajectory of how I saw things I would do have changed. And none of that is me doing it. It's just happening by itself. I'm I feel like as much as a participant as you or anybody else in this game, mm -hmm. I might look on the camera, but... I don't know like where the money is coming from, where the work is happening and everything is just like getting lined up. So I just feel so light mm -hmm. <laughs> and I have no performance pressure. I have, I just don't have any of that. So I wonder what this is. It's been miraculous. I've received a lot of gifts from life all, all my life. but. This is a whole different dimension. It's a whole different uh, paradigm and uh, life's entire trajectory uh, operating on a different uh, frequency or vibration altogether. Mm -hmm. Wow. I've never been more happy and elated and mm -hmm. joyous in life, I think, in how much I've been in last one week after our conversation and all these events, like, although I was in sheer pain, physically I was really in pain and I was telling my mom, I'm so much in pain, but I'm so happy. <laughs> so this uh, discord uh, of, um, this, it's, it's absurd at some point to the mind. Mm -hmm. But, so it is. So, just like, yeah, I wanted to begin here today. <laughs> this is what is happening. Okay. So, what's this flow like? What does it feel like for you when you hear this? <laughs> Well, I, whenever this, I feel this kind of energy, there seems to be a, well, a couple of comments come and one is that the, the destiny which is there mm. for you has always been there mm. and it's, so please remember that there is still no one doing this. Mm. But this, if this is what is the, des the destiny which you have in this life, mm. whatever that destiny is, I'm not just saying what the experience you're having, but the experience anyone's having. When, when a destiny is, when we are aligned with a certain destiny th through surrender, through mm. presence, then things do seem to happen and they happen easily. Mm -hmm. So this is one, one measure of knowing that you're in line with your destiny is that things begin to happen easily. Mm -hmm. But I also for you, I want to say, just be aware that even though you are, we can say, comfortable or happy with this apparent destiny, <laughs> it becomes very um, easy at this time to become distracted in a way mm. uh, even by beautiful things and beautiful possibilities and so mm. on mm. and what's happening in that case is that the individual ego mm. or the individual personality mm. can still try to co-opt what's happening. And what I mean by co-opt is it will turn 
the events into into a new shape of me. Mm. Okay? Mm. So understand that part of what happened is you really let go of me that last time. Mm. And this opens the heart to the possibility of one's true destiny. Mm. And then something can happen like this, which can feel very beautiful, even yes. miraculous. Yes. Yeah. And one can become eventually mm. just as identified mm. with a new shape of me or yeah. a new form of me mm. as one was with the with the egoic form earlier. of me before earlier mm. yeah earlier that's good yeah but so, this would be worse like uh, huh? why <laughs> it's like this would be worse probably why because it's like the spiritual ego probably I, that would make make me Yes. Yeah, more so, arrogant than so that's the that's the so that's the the thing i want you to keep in kind of in yes. the back of your or maybe in the in the presence of all of this while it's happening is yes. hold that that recognition that we talked to before i think in the last meeting about and to correct me if i'm wrong but did we talk about the hollow reed Mm -hmm. I guess yes. You, you talked about, mm. and, I, and I said something about mm. the way we want to really be throughout whatever our destiny is, mm. is as though we are a hollow reed and life is yeah. blowing the tune through the reed, mm. and we are just the reed, mm. and we remain as the reed. Mm. And this can be very hard to do once we become involved with. Mm, Mm -hmm. um, once people begin to think that somehow, because the feeling is, the people will say, to, will get the feeling that somehow you are doing this. Yeah, that is very true. Mm -hmm. And it's that, um, so Osho used to say, right, that there is, uh, being a guru is the one of the worst ways to get identified in the world. So I used to tell everybody, yes. I don't want to be a guru. Yes. That's well, the like thing about it is, that, yeah, the thing about it is, is, is that you, that's a gilded cage. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean by a gilded cage? Yes. It's a very beautiful environment, but it's also very confining. It's still a cage. It's still a cage, and it's still a cage. That's the last thing um, that's probably kept me away all these years from doing many things so yes so the so that's not the problem now the now you mm. stay in tune with whatever whatever is happening mm. but always be checking in to be mm. sure that this mm, identity isn't reforming itself around the new mm. whatever whatever this is yeah around yeah. what appears to be the new destiny yes and have no attachment to that new the new form of that destiny, because mm. we met, re remember that things are both the reality mm. of life, the reality is both form and formless. So mm. I'm encouraging you to keep, even with this new mm. <laughs> understanding, this new vision, path, this new yeah. path opening up before you, I'm encouraging you to keep looking to the empty nature of all phenomenon. Mm. Even even the most beautiful, <laughs> because it's often mm. said in the tradition that the path of difficulty, mm. you know, of ill health or financial problems or personality or psychological problems, that in some ways it can be said these this is the easier form of the path. Mm. If you get to the if you get to the form of the path where everything around you is pleasant, pleasing, yeah. beautiful. Normal. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this becomes normal for you. Yeah. Then you become also not watchful mm. of the way in which the personality, the ego, and so on can, comes out. back in, and and in a in a much more subtle way, it it co-ops mm. the experience of pleasure. So when that that I've never seen this. Mm. I've I've gone through this path of ill health and yes. problems and yes. just gone through hell so yes. far. 
so how does it come i don't even know how would it come well, but this, to be cautious just to well understand. because the ego is very tricky and so in the same way that you, you know you have the full experience of identifying with when you are feeling sick or things are difficult yeah or you are suffering in some way this mm. is easy to identify with mm. and then one of the things that the ego can do mm. is it can begin ego remember, remember that there is no ego but one of the th one of the ways that the mind yeah, can the psychological once you feel that that sh paradigm shift where you shift where suddenly everything is god everything is the supreme mm. you, the way that it can trap you again is it begins to f feel something like oh i now i am living the fortunate life you know now mm. i am awake now i am enlightened it mm. begins to identify in that way mm. and and that may be, well be true mm. but that's really not for you to say yeah it's really not it, mm. it, you know other people may say oh this one is awake this one is enlightened you know devotees may come around mm. um others may say oh this one is is so wise and so but if you identify with that mm. at its core mm. that's identifying with the role of the guru or the teacher mm. is no different than identifying with the role as the whatever anything yeah that, you know, whatever the sickness or mm. the or the challenge or whatever it's still a form of identification mm. <laughs> so that's all i'm saying just remind yourself mm. that this is if this is god's work if this is the work of the supreme in this life mm. through you as a hollow reed fine beautiful <laughs> yeah but don't build a new personality around it yes just do the work and do it without mm, attachment mm. and do it in freedom it feels very um like it's not possible to plan or know before it happens mm -hmm. so i think that's uh, that's one way that it keeps itself in check um it's like a self feeding mechanism to me right now that uh, i don't have to take care of this venture or anything mm -hmm. i am not responsible mm -hmm. i am not uh, yeah like in any way i'm not uh, i i don't know accountable to the process so it's it's much easier and effortless because there's no outcome expected out of it particular way in which it should be done so i was also very surprised that um, the people who showed up they are not uh, all you know into these things they living a normal life everybody but somehow uh, they felt they want to be part of this mm -hmm. and some friends here some friends outside some friends outside india they just want to be part of this and it's forming itself like a swarm of bees uh, how they become yes it's also very beautiful yes yeah and it's just like all, <laughs> like really mystical but like if you think really that those people won't form some desire for an outcome around it hmm yeah you see, even, yeah that's that's what we're saying here is you you need to form no sense of outcome or goal yeah for this but you will find very quickly that when as people mm. get involved that they will have expectations of what you, of you of what you are doing mm. of the teacher or guru of that put you in yeah. that position yeah. and then that's where the gilded cage comes in is wow. because the question will be can you remain as free as you feel right now yeah. <laughs> at this point i feel very um yeah detached if i may i don't know if that is the right word to use but i mean i feel a gap between it and me but i also feel like i was telling you last time i feel like a free radical mm -hmm. i could be anything now <laughs> uh and uh, so is it um, 
like for example i quit smoking uh just woke up the other day and and i didn't feel like going back to it mm-hmm. and nothing forced uh nothing like that it just it felt like i was carrying it from my earlier part of life or something it was my coping mechanism during the traumatic days but then it carried on as a habit and i'm like now it's just a habit mm-hmm. and it just literally dropped it's like mom was also surprised because they were always worried about my health and concern mm-hmm. so it's also very nice to see that things drop away um, but at the same time like you said i don't know what this new i'm just a week old baby now yeah and uh, yeah and it feels some some nights are not sleeping and some nights are sleeping long a uh, lot of recalibration of the body as well mm-hmm. in terms of food and sleep and very fundamental things have rearranged i feel although i physically is the same person and uh, yeah and it's been intense it's in some way as well um but the divine feels more um in my gut in my body it just feels different the body texture feels different to me so it's this yeah that's what it is right now mm-hmm. like i said it is destiny that i'm now getting a line to be that was always there that's why it's effortless or whatever so the destiny also had uh, you in it mm. and the conversation that happened in it mm. yes um but i have pursued inquiry consciously for 10 years mm-hmm. so even that part is divine mm. so was there ever a doer in this no right you could never have done anything different right Like I, but that's not a, a consequence of being you. That's a consequence of the destiny of this incarnation. You could yeah. never have done anything different. So where were you in all of that? Yeah, know? like it I, appears that we're making decisions yeah, and that yeah. we are, we are somehow making choices. Yes, but we we never were were able to make any other choice. Nothing. Correct. Just talking to mom, I realized this. I was I was telling her that. was it all along scripted <laughs> and maybe the question is yes uh, maybe the answer is yes maybe there's no question there so how are we making decisions then are there any decisions that are being made by anybody ever <laughs> well the answer to that is is it no but there is the appearance of decisions being made but at a certain in a certain way of understanding or a certain way of seeing one sees that one was led to the decision which was already made hmm i don't know no no i don't get this can you say that again one was led to the decision hmm which one realizes had already been made in some way by the destiny itself so the destiny hmm. is both is manifesting both hmm as its own movement or motion hmm, hmm. but it's also mm, it's raising it's rising as an appearance that the un, until a certain level of understanding that the individual is the one making the decisions hmm but at a certain place a certain level of understanding or wisdom you can say it's seen that no other no other path was possible or no other decision was possible yeah so that's when one can really question well was there a doer or was there a decision making hmm doer no there was no decision making doer but because you can see that it, you were just guided by the circumstances guided by 
the inherent wisdom of life itself to mm. go in a particular direction or to experience a certain experience for the benefit of la later making other decisions that appeared to be mm. made. But all the while you were really being kind of guided in a particular way. So, I mean, even those decisions, <laughs> for example, I had a calling to do something and I did not do because of, say, I didn't have the money. Mm -hmm. Example, I didn't go for this particular retreat. Mm -hmm. Now that felt at that point of time that the other choice to go for that retreat was more aligned. But at the same time, I know now that it can't be traced back because it was not meant to happen in that way. Yeah. So, so you can say yes or you can say this is what I want. You can say this is what I think should happen. This is what I know should happen. This is what I feel deeply in my heart should happen. Yeah. And the universe can still say no. Yes. Don't go in that direction. Yeah, it's like not a no that it's, that's a negative thing or saying yeah. this is not right for you. It's just simply saying no, don't go in that direction. Not yet not or yet. not now. Yeah, like yeah. Maybe later, but not now. Yeah, like there's like a divine delay or divine intervention or a divine detour or divine alignment. Mm. But all of it essentially is the same thing. Yeah, you, you, what you're calling divine alignment or divine intention just means that you cannot go in a direction which is not beneficial for you or which is not mm. part of your growth plan yes. or part of your Parabdha Karma in this life. Yes. You cannot, you simply cannot do it. No. So what will happen will happen. Hmm. What will, what is not destined to happen will not happen. Hmm. Um, you, you know, Bhagavan said, try as you may. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you can, you can try as you may to get something to happen. But hmm. if it's not within the, the, dhar the Dharma or the Karma or the Prabhupada Karma of this life, it will not happen. Hmm. So con uh, also he said, conversely, something which is, which is, um, Mm. destined to happen for you mm. you can do everything that you it, within your willpower to avoid it mm. uh, whether it's out of fear or what you can try to avoid your mm. destiny for as long as you want mm. but eventually it will show through yeah you know that which is bound to happen is going to happen no matter what you do that which is not destined to happen is not going to happen no matter what you do this is the foundation <coughs> excuse me, of, the, of his comment, mm. his pointer, mm. that says, therefore, keep quiet. Mm. Right? Okay. So this is part of what I would like you to understand in, in, in this right now, mm. is that, yes, the, the paradigm shift appears to have happened, beautiful, good, lovely. Mm. That, the consequence of that in the mind is mm. that the mind says, oh, look at this, look at that. This is happening, this is happening, this is happening, this is mm. happening. Isn't this lovely? Isn't this wonderful? But that's still just the mind interpreting yeah. what, what the deeper process is and trying to take ownership of it. Mm. Remember that the sage said, in, in the face of both good and bad, Mm. Positive and negative, keep quiet. Mm. And this is not meaning don't say anything about it. Mm. This is meaning don't attach mm. into outcomes. Not only don't attach to being the doer in the mm. situation, but also don't attach to, the, to any possible outcomes. Mm. You know, he remained free even as he went from uh, a beggar on the hill with, in just a loincloth to being surrounded by a huge ashram and thousands of people. Yeah. You see his demeanor never changed. He was always just this silence. Mm. And they would, people would say, oh, you are, you know, later in his life, people would say, oh, this is wonderful what has happened to you. You are this great guru. You are, you know, and he would say, so you say. <laughs> And to one person he said, <laughs> so he uh, yeah, and to one person he said, you know, he talked about this gilded cage idea, but he didn't call it that. He simply said, 
they used to were the same. You know, oh, this is so wonderful. You have all these thousands of people mm. are they are they are worshiping you. They are devoted to your to your person, to your mm. being. And his response was, "My tucket has become my jail." My my tucket. Tucket. Remember, he sat always on the cushion. Yes. Yeah. Uh. Right. So you, you can't see in this picture, but behind him, he's laying. He's sitting on a couch with his feet stretched out. Yes. This is called a tucket. Okay. In, especially in northern India. Okay. <laughs> my tucket has become my jail, and this was clear. And you can go today uh, to his ashram, uh, and you can go into the meditation hall, and mm -hmm. you can see the tucket where he sat for yeah. his whole for his whole teaching career. Yes. And you can see that there is a wooden. Yeah, like the bars. There's a wooden bar yeah. barrier yeah. all around his yes. his tucket. Yes. That wasn't put there after his death. That was put there long before his death. Really? Because people kept coming in and trying to touch him and touch his feet and bow oh, at him. Okay. And w w what he was referring to is that, yes, he, he it was his destiny to be this great guru. Yeah, it's but it was, Sadhguru. I mean, but it was, Sadhguru. Such a beautiful. Yeah. But it was also his destiny not to be able to walk around the hill anymore. Not to be able to go out in public, not to wow. be able to do the things that he loved to do. Wow! Mm. Be because he was required to sit there yes. on the tucket for the sake of the visitors mm. from you know. Very good, literally. From yeah, he would chop vegetables in the morning, three o'clock, four o'clock, when there was no one around. <laughs> he could get up and he could go into the kitchen and chop vegetables and mix spices and and get the the day's cooking going. Yeah. But then by Five thirty, six o'clock. He was required to be on the tucket. Mm. Visitors would start coming, and he was okay with that. You know, this was his destiny, so he knew this. Mm. But then he was required to be there throughout the whole day and be there until nine o'clock at night, ten o'clock at night. Wow. Later on, they started establishing, you know, like one hour a day mm. when he could come off of the tucket and he could walk up the hill, and no one was permitted to go with him. Oh. This was after his comment. I believe mm. this is my belief in this. I don't mm. know if this is true, but after his comment that his tucket mm. had become his jail or his couch had become his jail, mm. then there was the recognition that to demand that he sit there mm. from six in the morning until ten at night, getting up only to go to toilet and go mm. and go for food mm. for a meal, um, because you know people wouldn't eat unless he was in the dining hall. So he had to go into the dining hall. He had to have the meal. <laughs> He had to always be in the presence of yeah. devotees, and he was completely surrendered to this. But then there was an there was a time when people realized, when his attendants realized that there mm. needed to be a time when he could go out the back gate of the ashram, go up mm. on the hill, wander, and people were required to stay in the ashram. No, mm. no one was, no attendants were allowed to go. <clears throat> and this is when you see him on the pictures of him on the hill, just carrying his his pitcher of water yeah. and wandering a little bit on the hill for an hour, an hour and a half. Wow. And he was no longer, he no longer could go around the hill. He couldn't do production. The crowds were too big and, mm. and mm -hmm. or people just wouldn't simply let him go. When he tried to go around the hill, he would have to stop every 10 minutes and eat something or drink something because people were so insistent. Wow. But in all of this also, like, now you spoke about this, no? Um, so the, it shows up uh, the destiny or whatever you need it to do. And it may or may not be the personal choice because there's no personal choice now. Yes. Or personal preference yeah. to who you are and what you do. Yeah. Mm. Who has access to you mm. as well. Mm. Um, like I'm, a, I'm an absolute loner, like I've lived alone 10 years now, even in a place like India. Mm -hmm. And I was super young and everybody was like, as a woman you're living alone in like random spiritual hills and stuff. And I, I loved it. And this uh, sudden movement of people wanting to me to be there and like mm -hmm. talking to 400 people in a day, I felt, uh, but I didn't feel anything somehow in that moment but 
But even this will come and go. This will happen now. You know, this is what this. Is, but even this, even if this does happen, yeah. Recognize that this will come and go. This is still a phenomenon in the field of awareness. Right. It yeah. will come and go. Like I didn't feel much. I felt okay. This is what it the is. The question still becomes: Who is aware of this? You see, it, mm. it, this is what can get lost in this kind of a of, of an experience, especially if it results in mm. people showing up, you know, and mm. requiring. No, I, I th I'm very happy we are laying this foundation. Mm -hmm before I start doing what I'm planning to do because mm. I think this was just my last uh, thread uh, somehow that was also keeping me a little back. Um, what was the last thread? This part that uh, to talk to public and to be in others and that do I want to invite all this in my life? But it doesn't have a choice oh. only. Like I don't. Yes, have, I was going to say you don't have a choice now. You so don't how, have a, you how do don't I have a choice. be with it? Is uh, well, you know, I can just tell you from my own experience that I kept it out of my life for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> True. Right. Yes. Yeah. So many years. No? Yeah, I kept it out of my life for a long time, <laughs> and I was quite happy. People still came, but one, two, at a time. You know, I wasn't willing to to teach in public. Mm. And um, but then circumstances change that. So mm. at, at one point I was tricked in a way into <laughs> tricked. I was tricked Why into. Why you say that? Ah, uh, because I was invited to come and listen to uh, Ma Devaki Mataji talk about okay. Yogi Ramsara Kumar, and when I walked in, and she said, "I have a chair for you here. Sit down." Okay. And then she and then she said, "I am not talking tonight. He is." Oh so, wow! So Yogi Ramsara Kumar simply said, "It's time." It, yeah, just like it's time. Yeah. And still, at that moment, I didn't think anything of it. I just said a few words, and then people mm -hmm. asked questions, and I talked for an hour or whatever, mm -hmm. answering people's questions and this and that. And then that whole then this whole thing started, but but. Mm. It, you see, it, destiny doesn't have anything to do with my choices. Yeah, like you don't have a. Pre I just can't see right. my preference, right. and that's exactly probably that's my question. That I don't have a preference, and I am. Yes. I have to, and I'm not saying no. I'm not saying yes. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I am, and that's where it well, is. Well, understand is that it? you can only say no or yes in the here and now. If hmm. you always remember that. Then you can always you can say yes to everything, hmm. if you, in a way, because you simply know that even though you say yes to everything, oh, much of it doesn't happen. Isn't this true in your own life? True. Just in your very ordinary yeah, life, yeah. Like uh, you, you can say yes, 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 yes to this person, that person, this situation, that situation, hmm. and probably seventy or eighty percent of that never mm. actually happens. No, yeah. So you don't need true. to say no, I no, I don't want that. You can simply say, okay, yeah, that's going to happen. But yes, okay. And then the people don't call or it doesn't happen or Yes, so this, circumstantially this, uh, <laughs> so I used to read uh Dao De Ching uh, as like a Bible mm -hmm. for many years mm -hmm. and um I somehow feel what Lao Tzu was saying is uh, this phenomenal rhythm, this change of uh, circumstances outside and body and everything is Tao. Tao is how, how things work, how things the flow work. of things, the flow yes. of things, and in the phenomenal world, yes. And that rhythm is probably the most obvious thing to human life. Mm -hmm. Is the most ordinary human experience, the Tao, yeah. because that's how everything is. Like, how could you not? So that which yeah. exists exists anyway. So how, um, like, who am I to even question, understand, whatever? Like, whatever I've done so far. Yes. So. So just remain neutral to goals and remain neutral to outcomes, and you'll be fine. Yeah. Remain neutral as the doer. Hmm. Let things unfold in the way that they want to unfold. 
Hmm. Like I have practical things to do and um, I haven't done them in three days and I just felt like it it the right moment is I didn't feel into it so I didn't initiate any conversation that I needed to. If I would have things would have been different is what I felt before I entered the room. I was just telling mom I was like this conversation is due for three days. And uh, if today, like, if we were not to do this, I will have an hour, I'll go do that. And now we're sitting here. So this was all along the Tao, right? So just seeing Tao from different uh, points in time, in the day, is probably the exercise now, mm. sometimes. Like, I get aware, okay. This is exist. That which exists exists. That's it. Uh, no more stories to it. Yeah. Or this mm. or that or whatever. And if it has to happen, it will. And if it doesn't have to happen, it will not. So I don't want to try to make anything happen. That's clear. So when I don't make anything happen, we'll see what happens. But there is also um, one another thing I wanted to really share with you is that. I've never felt this carefree in my life. You've never felt? This kind of carefree. This ah. I have had deep faith and things, but... And I'm not careless. I'm, I'm not uh, not taking care of things. But <laughs> some part of me is just like... Yeah. Carefree now that, okay? If not this, something else, something, if not that, something else, but whatever. Uh, and that is the most uh, pleasant thing. Mm. <laughs> so you're not careless, but you're carefree. Probably more now uh, when something like this changes and, and this is also being seen, so I don't know. <laughs> Just remain. Yeah. Just remain. It's, it's the freedom and lightness. One another thing that you told me last time was when you are relaxed, when there is just this relaxation to your being, to your body, to whatever, even the material flows only that time. And the spiritual also. So is this the fundamental state that people talk about or how I've read about? Are people referring to this? What's being referred to or being talked about, I have to say, is not a state. It's, a, it's an isness. Mm. So if there is a. No, I, if, I if, should if have framed it. Uh, if there is a uh, sense. Mm. that one is experiencing a state mm. then again look look to the look to the background on which that state is appearing look mm. to the awareness itself which is aware of a state which is present because the awareness itself which is beyond states mm. one can refer to as an isness mm. and so this doesn't have that quality of of, a, of states which come and go. Mm, yeah. It's just a constant stream. It's not even a constant stream. It's just a suchness. <laughs> what can I say? Suchness. We're losing the words here. Yeah. We're talking about something that you can't really be talked about. Mm, yes, I, I feel you. <laughs> I, I had a practical joke in mm. my head. Mm. Uh, nothing can be truer than the truth that is you know um, and I find it as a practical joke because I uh, still have some part of me that wants to call something some part of the world false some mm. part of my reality as false or mm. whatever mm. but the only falsehood was the doer part that I was looking for the the doer that I was telling you that did I make those decisions to get here? 
were those the right decisions to make mm. and like all that uh, that seems to be a whole false story now because all along this is what was scripted and this is what is happening and the more and more i get aligned to the just this this whatever this now i don't know again blank is uh, uh that's there's no, there's no nothing truer than the truth um and yeah <laughs> so i find it a bit funny yeah <laughs> uh, and empty as well in some way but And yes, but this is very important, but empty in some way, yeah. because it's from that understanding that you can step into this timeless awareness. Mm. Hmm? You can step into this timeless awareness in which there is no doer, huh. but there is still a recognition mm. of presence of awareness, which is ongoing, and it can't be tied to anything. You mm. can't be. so there is no doer hmm. but but can it can be said that still this this i am hmm. presence hmm. this is realized and recognized and is there at, under all circumstances hmm. but that doesn't constitute a doer hmm. it's almost more that there is an observer of what is happening but in, in that observer there is no one there is nothing Hmm. There is only this recognition of consciousness is here. That's the only thing that can be said about this moment. Consciousness is here. Hmm. And it manifests inside each individual who who is stable as the I am. It feels like I am or the I exist. It hmm. feels as it feels as though this so this the strong presence of I exist is still here. But this I is not the doer. this i is simply the awareness itself which is even not, i is not necessary the awareness is here mm. awareness on the grand scale you can say is here awareness is the most expansive possible position is here mm. and it is simply watching what is coming spontaneously staying for a period of time and then going and what i observed while you said this was that um i don't have a recognition when i am in the world but my actions are spontaneous now is there a need to remember no You see from the position of spontaneity actions are just going on. Yeah, and they, they, they don't need to be remembered or guided like or like no control is being exerted and I'm not in resistance to. Mm, right. Earlier there was a lot of resistance mm. that is what was causing me to make one choice or the other. Mm. Now I am okay. Like half an hour what happened today? I was fine. I was like, yes. oh, we'll do But something else. Yes. But choices are all, understand that there will be the appearance that choices are always being made. This whole appearance uh, of choices mm, is it like a test by the universe? Is it like a test by the universe? No. Is it is it any of that? Like it's I can't see that. It doesn't appear that way to me. it feels like that to me like used to i i can't say now but used to that you have two or three choices you can make a higher choice and uh, yes but this is still on a relative level yes of course yeah yeah no i'm i'm speaking from a person's point of view now that the appearance of choices how the sharad uh, plays out mm. is what i i want to just so it feels that appearance of those choices and then um it depends on uh yeah like the willingness to to see the truth that you choose probably the higher and it will look like that but the divine is choosing for you at that point anyway so that appearance is just there to calm you down and like just like you know you go through it in some way so it's like a simulation 
where everything is already predecided everybody is acting according to their roles and their whatever uh, situations and circumstantially feels like there are a, uh, yeah now now i got the right words circumstantially it feels appearance of choices the circumstances appear in a way that there is 1 2 3 but whereas we always know which door was about to was going to open and that is the door that opens anyway mm-hmm. so my effort to try and do the others is also decided by the divine that okay mm-hmm. your prarab the karma is this long let's create some solution some game some part of you that goes through this and that goes through that it feels like that to me and uh, like kabir says no you are the puppet Uh, in God's hand. And if all of this comes to a stop, then what? Yeah, now I'm like, okay, the, now I can't find a reference to the door. So, yeah, the whole appearance, the whole game feels. Um, but I had. Do so you still have the feeling in in this moment right now, in hmm. this very moment? Do you still have the feeling that something is going on? Something is appearing. Something is appearing. Or something is happening right now. Right now, in this moment, is there something happening? Mm-hmm. Yes, but I don't feel resistance to it. That's what I can report. But no, I don't think it's like nothing is happening. No, I don't think like that. I don't feel like that. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, I <laughs> I don't feel like that. I feel there's something happening, and I'm mm-hmm. part of it, and I'm okay with it. whatever happens is fine but uh, and if it all comes to a stop what if nothing is happening this is what i'm asking you to look at now hmm. what if you only think something is happening right now and nothing is really happening then where are you wow that feels very empty and what is the problem with that Not really. Technically, nothing doesn't feel like a problem. Yeah, I've stumbled upon this before, but yes, I didn't stay there. I I didn't stick to it. You did bring me here before. I know this place. Hmm. Wow! So the all of this is happening is also an appearance of choices. It's yes. the same appearance. Yes, it's an appearance of choices. It looks like something is going on. Yeah. But there is a deeper. Mm, we can say mm. there. There's another. Mm, there's moving beyond mm. what those appearances are, mm. and seeing the emptiness of those appearances. and then resting in what is there when all of those appearances are allowed to just dissolve or come to a stop mm. Mm. it's not a stop it just doesn't bother I I wouldn't use the word stop for what I am sensing, and it's a sense now. I have stopped feeling it. Um, it's just a sense. It's just just an intuitive sense. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah.
what can be said now? It's blank. I mean, just blanked out. It's completely blank. But still here. Yeah. Mm. There's, um, there's a deeper layer to the Tao and mm. um, yeah. Yes, it's all beyond choice or choicelessness. Mm. You see, all of these um, concepts are very interesting and lovely to talk about and we go through these levels, we can say, of of understanding, so say, yeah. but it's all to end up in silence, mm -hmm. in this place of, you can't say place, but in this recognition mm -hmm. of the unconditioned nature of self mm -hmm. in every moment. And everything that appears on the surface of unconditioned nature of self is also self but conditioned through concepts, ideas, experiences, and so on. Mm. And this is why it's said that nothing has ever happened, because this, the unconditioned, the self alone, uh, it, ha it has no need or for these concepts. It, it, it has no need for the choices. There's no need for choice of choicelessness. <laughs> it has no need of anything. It simply is here now. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's no processing here. Yeah. It, nothing happens, nothing gets processed, nothing gets produced. Yeah. Um, yeah. And whatever happens, happens. It doesn't yes. stick anymore. It doesn't stick anymore, yes. Yeah. Very good. But uh, like today, I, I felt like in this moment, it felt like all of this is just what it's feeling like right now that the empty emptiness is not uh, uncomfortable. Mm, very good. Very good. This is the first time ever because I felt and then I've gotten scared and I've gotten back to some philosophy every time. Mm -hmm. I saw that part of me just now. Mm -hmm. Very good. I used the same philosophy to get here, to escape from here as well. And it's uh, very vulnerable to say that um, to the mind, but I can observe that there is nothing there as well. I can't be vulnerable to anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm not vulnerable at all <laughs> to anything uh, at this point. Uh, so to the mind, it feels like, wow, you're exposing this. and But it needs to be exposed because I know I have done it before. And it's nice to acknowledge and put a ribbon on yeah. it. And yes let go of it. It served me probably so far um, in some way, <laughs> which I don't so know. So I would like you to just to look and ask, ask yourself if you, if you can, if, there, if it's possible for you to see directly that in this emptiness which you are no longer afraid of, or in this silence which you are no longer afraid of, that, that in, in order for there to be any thought Beyond, you said it is just a, a blank or it is just an open space or mm. however we want to call that. Can you also see that in that space, in order for anything, mm. anything mm. to manifest or to be happening, the very first thing that has to happen is that this sense or this, yes, this sense of I mm. has to come forward mm. out of this emptiness. It has to come forward. And then when it does that, all of this begins to flower. 
Oh, there's oh. more to this. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> and if that eye does not step forward, yeah. if there is a simple resting in the silence, mm -hmm. this can go on eternally. But that's not the nature of the eye either. The nature of the eye is to move forward. Mm. This is the image of Shiva, completely still, completely silent, completely mm. mountain-like. Mm. And Shakti mm. flowing forward out of that. Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah. I also feel I'm pregnant with something. Yes. This understanding of somehow this is the mm. way of how this manifestation comes about. Mm. How the appearances happen. Wow. Directly. It's the, incredible. It's when this sense of this mm. I sense, this I am sense, this I exist sense, however you want to say it. This is why Bhagavan kept saying, ask who am I? Mm. Because, and then go into silence. He said, ask who am I, but then allow there to be a, a gap. A, go into the silence. Don't need the question to be answered. Because mm. eventually when you become as you did today, when you go into the silence and there's no fear, there's no rejection, there's no grasping, there's no mm. clinging, there's no doing, there simply is this being which is here as this silence or this emptiness. Then one has the opportunity to see at some point with the mind, mm. because you see it is the mind which is liberated. Mm. So when, when one sees that it is when this eye sense comes forward spontaneously out of the sense of self, out of the sense of emptiness, mm. out of the eye sense, that all of creation comes. So the, the absoluteness of the creation yeah, stems from here. Like everything is yes. absolute from here. Yes. Everything is in absolute sort of... And this is just perfection. happening spontaneously as the nature of what is. Mm. Mm. See, at this point we can drop all the concepts. We can drop the concepts of the Divine, of God, of there being yeah, a like plan. Yeah, like there can't be anything un-God. Can't be anything un-God. Beautiful. That's great. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Can't be anything un-God. Yeah. Yeah, I was... Uh, yeah, that, that <coughs> crossed my mind. I couldn't speak it. There's what can be un-God. Uh, the God there is, so there is un-God, so... Um, the I, whole I, duality breaks apart. Yeah, like, the, like, like how before we started, I lost the mala. I felt like I lost God with it. Like the whole concept or whatever God is to me. That was too much in the moment uh, for some I, I shook a little bit inside mm. so probably and don't know now what God is and I'm okay with that. but I just, <laughs> the reference I had is definitely not that so maybe it was so we enough. begin to understand that this experience that you just had of the Supreme Consciousness just resting as itself mm. without concepts. Mm. And the very first concept you could have is emptiness or blankness. Yeah. <clears throat> but before that sense of emptiness or blankness that was before the mind defined it in that way, mm. first had to arise a sense of meanness or I-ness, not even meanness, but I-ness. The I sense had to be present. Mm. Otherwise, you would just sit here in silence for eternity. Yeah, I was wondering what spoke to me, mm -hmm. uh, or is speaking to me right now. It's uh, mm. this doesn't have any location anymore. This has no location. Yes, mm. I can't locate it. Mm. At the same time, it is. Uh, yeah, it just is. It just is. Yeah, and, it I, just and, is. and it's untouched by mm -hmm. everything. 
it feels like it's dominating my presence at this point. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And I'll stay with this and I'll meet you again. Yes, very good. Hari Om. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I don't am grateful to have just had this opportunity to mm. be here and now with you. Mm. <laughs> thank you so much. Mm.